This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Jesus said there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the past, one of the things I always looked forward to when I had to go visit a, a doctor or the dentist or some other sort of medical professional was the opportunity to catch up on my celebrity gossip. Because for some reason, the waiting rooms of every doctor in the country has a copy of People magazine. <laughs> or at least they used to. I've noticed nowadays that many doctor's offices don't really have magazines or other reading materials. So, so I, I'm a little behind on my, I don't even know who the celebrities are. I watched that Dick Clark New Year's Eve show. And of course, Dick Clark's been dead for 10 years. And I don't know who any of those people are. So I guess I'm officially old, as my kids tell me. At any rate, waiting used to be very different, I think, across society than it is now. Because like back in the day, you would wait and you'd catch up on your celebrity gossip or a little bit of uh, Sports Illustrated or maybe it was really radical, like a red book or something. And then maybe you might like strike up a conversation with someone and, and maybe discover some commonality or that you knew each other or that in fact, you're like long lost cousins. Anything was possible. But now for the most part, I think most people just like whip out their phones and start playing Candy Crush or Angry Birds or whatever the kids play these days, whatever the grown-ups play these days. I don't know. I do know because I play on my phone all the time. It's a problem, I think. But this idea that waiting is something that can be productive seems to be an idea that I think a lot of people have lost. Now, that may be less so amongst this crowd than in some other crowds, because um, I do notice when I go to the doctor's office, if there are people who are older than I am, which some of you are, they will still kind of follow the old ways and they might actually talk to you. And those can be really engaging conversations. But our readings today, because it's the beginning of Advent, are about waiting. About waiting and waiting well. And I think that's something that maybe we've lost sight of. Right, because it's easy to read this story of these things that are happening that Jesus tells his disciples, there's, there's going to be great upheaval and chaos, and you should be ready for that. But it makes it feel like that all we have to do is sit around and wait for that to happen. And that waiting can become kind of a passive thing, which is why it feels like it's okay to just play on our phones, because, you know, there's nothing else better to do while we're waiting. It's very passive. We just sit back and, and wait for the thing to happen. So you can go into the doctor's office where they will ask you again why you're here. And then someone else will come in and they'll ask you why you're here. And then finally the doctor will come in and he'll ask you why you're here. And you'll go, didn't any of those other people tell you? 
Waiting is not meant to be passive. This is what Jesus is telling us, that this waiting for the son of man is not something that we're just sitting back and God's taking care of everything. And all we have to do is hang on tight until we get our golden ticket to wherever. Because the reality is that the things that Jesus describes, the upheaval and the chaos, are not things that are only associated with the coming of the Son of Man. It's not some future cataclysm that we're waiting for. That the opportunities for the kingdom of God to come near and for you to respond and that to encounter those who are in need because of chaos and upheaval present themselves all the time. All the time, whether it's small catastrophes within a single family, a loss of, a, of someone beloved or, or a rupture in a relationship, or whether it's something huge and catastrophic like wildfires that wipe out, you know, hundreds and thousands of acres and whole towns. That the upheaval and chaos of the world always presents to us an opportunity to encounter Christ and to be Christ to others. And that the waiting that we experience is not meant to be something that we're waiting for someone else to step up, to step in, to be Christ. And that this whole season of Advent is really about an anticipation of something that is coming, but also an invitation to participate in making it happen right now. That Advent is not a call for us to think just about the coming return of Jesus at some point in the future, hopefully soon. But an invitation to be the body of Christ, to actually be Jesus in the world right now. And that's why Jesus, when, when Jesus ascended into heaven, he, he left us the gift of community amongst the disciples and his other followers and the gift of the Holy Spirit to inspire and embolden us to continue his work of healing and reconciliation, of making peace, of showing people how the world is supposed to be and living as though it was already that way. That is the call to Christian life. And that all of the things we do, our, our pieties and our worship practices and our devotions and our, our understanding of scripture are all tools to help us live the life that Jesus wants us to live. Not just to believe in Jesus and not just to wait for Jesus, but to be Jesus, or at least Jesus-like. Because the cataclysm and chaos of the world, which is unleashed, is continuing. That the struggle between good and evil has not ended. It goes on. We are called into the breach to stand up for what is right, to be love incarnate ourselves, to embody grace and humility and a willingness to be of assistance, to help those in need. And we, we do a lot of that at this time of year, but Jesus calls us to do that throughout the year to always be vigilant for an opportunity to do Christ's work in someone's lives, to not wait for something, but to see the signs all around us and to respond to them, to sow the seeds of love and mercy. In this Advent, in this year, let us not wait passively. But let us take the opportunity to engage, to set aside our distractions and to focus on seeing the signs of Christ around us and the invitation to be him, to be his servant in the world. Amen.